As you know, on April 11, 2013, an incident took place that has shaken the Charlottesville community in its relationship with the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. In that incident, plainclothes officers aggressively approached three young women they suspected of buying alcoholic beverages. In fact, the young ladies had not done so, but even if they had, the aggressive tactics would have been unreasonable in relation to the violation. This is emblematic of a greater problem, which is the increasing aggressiveness of law enforcement tactics. It's not enough to apologize. It's time for change that should have happened long ago. My proposal is threefold. One, let's privatize all liquor sales, retail and wholesale. Private liquor stores that can lose their liquor license have an incentive to enforce the law. So the incentives are in the right place. Let's move all enforcement of ABC laws and regulations to local law enforcement and state police and move the funding for it as well. Communities can then determine the appropriate level of enforcement. And third, let's begin to address the greater problem of the increasing militarization of police tactics. If we do these three things, we will restore the trust between the community and the law enforcement that protects them. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. First, um, can you just go into a little bit deeper uh, on why you think limiting or taking away the uh, ABC authority, how would that help with uh, local law enforcement? Since they might already have a lot on their plate. Um, how do you think I think it's help? important to realize that law enforcement all is, about, is all about trade-offs and a professionalized police service that has built trust with the community is in a much better position to determine how best to use scarce resources on keeping the public safe. When you have an ABC enforcement office, they're focused on one thing, one thing only, and they have a tendency, and any organization like that has a tendency to, uh, to to doggedly pursue something without any uh, perspective. And so I think that, that removing, removing the enforcement powers from the ABC and, and moving it to, uh, to the professional police services that, that have to actually make the trade-offs, but, but also let the funding that we have uh, follow, follow that power, um, that's going to, that's going to give, give communities a better sense that, that police enforcement is, is uh, more in relation to the harms that are being caused by the violations that are being policed. Are you saying that the money now allocated to the ABC for law enforcement uh, functions should be reappropriated to other police agencies? I think I think that would be a, a solution that would be palatable to the local authorities, the jurisdictions, because one of the things that you know that local jurisdictions hate is mandates uh, and expectations of enforcement without without the uh, the funding to support it. Uh, but that's something that can be discussed uh, in legislative uh, enactments. In terms of, I know, the topic of training and being able to equip people with training, would that be a part of the responsibility of local jurisdictions? And do you think that that's I mean, timely or it would cost them in terms of time and funding? That's right. It's, it's, uh, everything, everything has trade-offs, but this is one of the reasons why do we want the kind of enforcement tactics that we saw here? And the answer is no. And so if that's the answer, if young people uh, purchasing alcoholic beverages underage is something that can be policed in a more cost-saving manner, rather than six, six officers uh, using very aggressive tactics, I think that you know, local law enforcement and state police are in a much better position to make those determinations and to be somewhat uh, proportional. Have you contacted ABC? I have not yet. We're reaching out to them though. Okay. So is, is this now another part of your of your campaign? I know you had, you're talking about drug reform as well as schools. Is this now going to be another uh, kind of? Well, this this fits nicely into the the broader issue of police militarization, which has always been a part of the drug reform proposal. I've also always been in favor of privatization of liquor stores because the government has no business in it in, in any case. 
Uh, but it is something that is timely and topical, and people want to hear about because it is so, such. It, it has really shaken the community. Have you, uh, on the topic of reaching out to different groups, have you talked to any local jurisdictions and gotten input on what they would think if those responsibilities ended up falling on them? Uh, we're, again, we're reaching out behind the scenes to a lot of uh, local jurisdictions. Most of my most of my personal interactions have been with individuals in various uh, in various um, uh, offices. So, what kinds of things are you hearing from people in these conversations? Well, it's it's sort of a the general the general response is an understanding that the increasing. The increasing aggressiveness of, of tactics is a problem, and there are a lot of areas other than the, you know ABC enforcement, obviously, where that's an even greater concern. Given that that's the case, people recognize that people want to, you know, people in positions of authority recognize that people don't want to feel threatened by the people who are supposed to be protecting them, and so I think there's a lot of open-mindedness. Now everybody is always concerned about what happens when legislators start legislating. That's always, that's always a concern. So we have to make sure that this is done properly, and we have to make sure that local jurisdictions are, are being served properly by the state government uh, that's, that's, going to, that's going to be... That we, we need to make sure the communication lines are, are open and that we're working closely with them. On the topic of uh, reallocating police resources, Senator Cree Deeds has made a similar proposal to yours. Uh, will you be reaching out to him personally, and, and would you work with him regardless of whether you're elected governor in November? Yes, yes. We, we, are, we are in the process of reaching out to his office, and I, I'm willing to work with anybody on this and any other issue. I think it's, it's great to see other people who are taking this very seriously.